Hello, my name is Bridget Mont, and I am the head of research and instruction here at the Mount St. Joseph University Library. Today, I'm going to be going over database, library database research, um, specifically EBSCO's CINAHL. So let's dive right in, and I'm going to share my screen. And first, let's start at the library website, which is library.msj.edu. So before you do your library database research, I'm going to direct you over here to the right under login, and you will see off-campus database access. You will need to do off-campus database access if you plan on doing any library research off-campus, such as at home. So if you click on that, it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the off-campus database access. But basically all you need is your last name and your library all card number, which is the 14 digit number that starts with all the zeros at the bottom of your MSJ all card this number right here. However, if you don't have an MSJ all card, if you've lost it, if you've forgotten your number, that's okay. We are able to retrieve it. So again, under login, you'll see look up your library ID number. Click on that. It's going to redirect you to my mount. And once you log into my mount, your number will be displayed right here. So fear not if you don't have a physical MSJ like ID or you've simply lost it or you've forgotten your number, you can still retrieve it right here. Okay, so once you've done your off-campus database access, now we can get into um, research. So this articles tab, we're going to click on that and we are going to do databases by subject. Our subjects are in alphabetical order over on the left. So I'm gonna scroll down to nursing. And this gives you your major databases as well as related databases. You'll notice that CINAHL, Medline, Alt Health Watch are all EBSCO databases, but we also provide other databases as well, such as Joanna Briggs out of Ovid and the Cochrane Library. But for today's session, we're gonna focus on EBSCO's CINAHL. CINAHL is the nursing database, so it is probably the best choice for you. And this is what it looks like. So when you do a Google search, I know you can put in the whole your whole search term or search topic or search question, and the Google algorithm automatically knocks out unnecessary words or phrases. However, these library databases do not do that. You have to do it for the database. So it wants you to take your research topic or your research question and boil it down to the main two, three, four keywords. And each keyword is gonna go in each of these um, search boxes. So for example, I'm gonna do high blood pressure and remote patient learn monitoring. And you'll see when I start typing words, autom keywords automatically start coming up. That's a good sign. That means those are popular keywords. So I'm gonna do remote patient monitoring. You'll notice one also has remote patient monitoring or telehealth or telemedicine. You could do that as well. I'm gonna keep it simple today and just stick with remote patient monitoring. When I do my searching, I like to start general and narrow down as I go. So I'm just gonna start with those two keywords and see how far we get. So we get 19. It's actually a very manageable number. Usually I like to keep it under 100. I find 100 search results to be the most manageable for me. If we were, if you had gotten over 100, you could either add in another keyword to try to limit it down, or here on the left side of the page, we have refine results. And this helps you limit your results as well. So for example, you can limit to date. 
Out of these 19 articles, it looks like the oldest is from 2011. But if you wanted articles within the past five years, you can just toggle this over to whatever date range you prefer. You can also modify by source types. So I'm gonna click academic journals. So now all 15 of these articles are coming from reputable accredited academic journals. So these are all gonna be scholarly peer reviewed academic journal articles. So you don't need to worry about, are these valid, are these good? Yes, these are all scholarly academic peer reviewed articles. So that is a really nice feature that EBSCO databases have. You can also limit by language, age, gender, whatever your personal preference. I'm gonna keep it to these 15. And I am gonna click on the very first one. And this is what we call our detailed record. It gives you the article title, its authors, where it's coming from. So this is our journal title, as well as our major subjects and our minor subjects, as well as our abstract. I recommend giving the abstract a look over because most academic articles are 20 plus pages. So before you download and read a 20 plus page paper, you might wanna make sure it is actually pertinent to your topic. So the abstract can be very helpful for that. Okay, so over here on the left is where our PDF full text is. You click on that. And here is our PDF of the article. You can print it out or you can download it to your computer. Um, I've had a question with some students on, is it okay to download articles to my computer or is that a copyright violation? No, that is totally okay. If you are getting app, uh, articles from any EBSCO database or any of our library databases, you can download as many articles as you want. So that is not a copyright violation. You are totally good to go. So I'm gonna go back and direct you to the tools on the right-hand side of the page. So we have Google Drive. So you can export this um, article to Google Drive if you have a Google Drive. You can print, you can email, you can export, you can permalink. And you'll notice there's also this site feature. So here is our APA citation of this article. Um, I will say that this is a computer generated citation. It is not always perfect. So before you copy and paste it into your works cited page, give it a look over and make sure it is APA compliant. Um, normally they are good to go, but not always. So um, just fair warning. And then you'll also see this add to folder. In order to add to folder, you have to first sign in to your EBSCO account. This is independent of the off-campus database access. This is signing in to EBSCO. So we're gonna hit sign in. And it's gonna prompt you to create a username or email address as well as a password. The email address and username do not have to be Mount affiliated. It can be whatever email address you check up most often or whichever username you can remember. So now that we're signed in, I can add to folder. Looks like I've already added this one to my folder. And once we go up to the top, we can hit folder. And it lists your articles in alpha order. So here is our article right here, saved a folder. If you don't sign in to EBSCO first and you hit add to folder, it works. You can also create new or custom folders that if you're working on multiple project research projects at the same time, you can make multiple folders and put the articles in whichever folder um, is pertinent. You can also export this, your folder or email your folder if you're working in a group and you wanna share this with somebody else. EBSCO articles um, are also compliant or 
can be used with Zotero and Mendeley if you use either of those citation platforms. Zotero and Mendeley can harvest citations from EBSCO. So that's nice as well. So let's go back. And we are gonna go back to our result list. And you'll notice this one has a PDF full text attached, but I'm gonna scroll down to, um, let's do number six. And you'll notice there's a full text finder and not a PDF attached. Some students get intimidated by a full text finder because the PDF isn't right there. But if you click on that, it's going to redirect you to a separate hyperlink. Click on that hyperlink. And then here's our article right here. Download PDF. So pretty easy. So if you see a article that has a full text finder as opposed to a PDF, don't disregard it. It's still really easy to get the full text of the article. You'll also notice for number two that it says request this item through interlibrary loan. That means that the mount does not have full text access to this article. So we have to ask another library if we can borrow it full text. So if you click on that, it's gonna prompt you to put in your first name, your last name, again, your library, library all card number, your address, your email address, and phone. Again, it does not have to be your Mount St. Joseph email address. It would be whatever email address you check most often. And then it's gonna populate the article information. And then you just hit submit. And this request goes to our ILL department to be fulfilled. Most ILLs take anywhere from 24 to 72 hours and you will get a notification through whatever email address you provide right here that your ILL article is available. And normally it is sent to you um, as a PDF. So that's how ILLs work. Okay, clicking on number two. I know I mentioned this briefly before, but I'm gonna dive into it a little more these major subjects and minor subjects. This is just another way of saying keyword. So this is a really nice feature because if you find an article that's absolutely perfect, this is exactly what you want, note what keywords the article uses. These are usually author supplied keywords. So note what keywords they use. Maybe you wanna focus more on diabetes or maybe you wanna focus on telemedicine or quality of healthcare. You could always take one of those keywords and plug it into your search and then hit search. So that's a really nice feature as well. Another way to find other keywords is this CINAHL subject headings. So if you click on that, this is just another way of saying MESH subject headings, which are this medical subject headings. These are a standardized set of keywords within the medical field. So I'm going to choose relevancy ranked where it's going to filter your results by relevancy. So for example, I'm going to do high blood pressure. Browse. And you'll note it's telling me to use hypertension. So hypertension is the correct keyword to use as opposed to high blood pressure. That's good to know. Maybe I'm not getting articles because I'm using the wrong keyword. It also lists other keywords it thinks may be relevant to high blood pressure. For example, blood pressure devices, venous pressure, blood pressure cuffs. So those are all keywords you could also add to your search. I'm gonna go back. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about these Boolean operators. So say for example, I wanted to add hypertension because I noted that is the correct keyword. I can do that. And is gonna tell the database to look for all three of these keywords together. If an article doesn't have all three of these keywords together, it gets kicked out. 
if I were to change it to or, any article that mentions hypertension or high blood pressure or remote patient learning is gonna get brought to you. So it's gonna expand your search greatly. So for example, we originally had 15 and now we have over 120,000. So it, it expands your search greatly. If you wanted to search high blood pressure and hypertension together, you could use this system, how it automatically puts the OR in for you. So high blood pressure or hypertension, high blood pressure or hypertension or systolic blood pressure or diastolic blood pressure. <laughs> I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. So if you click on that, that means and I'm gonna get rid of hypertension here. That means that an article has to have all three of those together, plus remote patient learning, not separately, which is what this OR would use. You could also choose not if maybe you didn't wanna focus on male patients. Maybe you just wanted to focus on female patients. So we'll search and we get 14. So that's how Boolean operators work. So make sure you use your Boolean operators mindfully. So you'll notice with this one male, male or men or man or males or males or boys or men. These are all just variations of basically the same word. So you can choose whichever one you want and you may have to do multiple searches. Um, to encompass all of the various keywords. Okay. And I think that was everything I wanted to show you. Oh no, one more thing. One more little trick with EBSCO databases is up here at the top, we have choose databases. This is a time-saving tip, I would say. If you click on that, you can search multiple EBSCO databases at the same time. So for example, if I wanted to do Alt Health Watch, which is Alternative Health, or Medline, which is our medical database. So let me hit Medline and Medline with full text. Up here, I know it says select all, and that can be really tempting to select every database and search every database at the same time. Please do not do that because that is gonna muddy up your search results a lot. So just click on the databases you think might be pertinent to your research question. So I'm just gonna stick with Alt Health Watch and Medline, as well as the CINAHL we're already using, and hit OK. So now we're searching all three of those databases at the same time, so we don't have to toggle in between the different database screens. I'm gonna keep my same search, and I get 79, you'll notice I get a lot more. That's because we're searching three databases at the same time. Now, some of these might be duplicates. Some of these articles might appear in all three databases. So just be mindful that that number may be a little misleading. You'll note right here, it'll tell you what database this article is coming from. So this one's coming from Medline. This article has been pulled from Medline. This one has been pulled from CINAHL. This one has been pulled from Medline. So um, I find that to be a nice time-saving hack. Um, some students don't like it as much. I'd say it's personal preference, but just wanted to let you know that that option is available. Okay, and with that, I think we are finished today. Um, so thanks so much for going through database searching with me using CINAHL. Again, my name is Bridget Dumont and I am a librarian here at the Mount Library. And I am more than happy to answer any questions or research, provide any research assistance you may need. Okay, thanks. Bye.